this is not good. I didn't print all that. It's, it's quite a quite a bit. Do you need a Chromebook to look in, Jennifer? Or what you no, no, no. I have my phone. Yeah. Okay, I'll be happy. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Read your minutes. If you find a problem before the next board meeting, you want to bring that up. Uh, Lee, Preston, do you want to, Coach Knowles, y'all want to speak on that? This is a good job. I'll let pretty quick. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is Preston Tomlinson. He uh, played for me at Watertown. Uh, he just finished up his career at Maryville College, for, played there a couple of years. And um, I'm wanting him to help me this year as my assistant coach. And I'm also wanting him to take over the middle school boys that way. We're on the same page. So they're doing exactly in the middle school what I'm doing in the high school. That way, when they walk in as freshmen, they know exactly what we're doing. So there's no disconnect. I'm not losing time having to teach the same things over and over and over. And it, it just becomes a unified system rather than, you know, wasting a lot more time than we need to be doing. So that's why I kind of want Preston to take over this for me and keep him on as long as possible. I've been preaching after 10 years. You're right on track, man. Mm -hmm. Where it should be. Matter of fact, that's where every junior high team should be. It's tied right. back to the head coach. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the same page when they get there. And you, they've saved you a lot of time too. You don't have to teach your system fundamentals. It just makes sense. Yes, sir. I did some research today. Nothing but good things. Yeah. On me? On you? Yeah. <laughs> I and not just for me. So yeah, great things. Yeah, very good reputation. Thank you. Yeah. Is it, anybody else any questions for him? I say that no, I've already asked all mine. Now we have to. He already understands, right? The background check, all that has to be done there. We've already done all that. Okay. Um, okay. So we need to take care of it. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Great thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is with you every year with a cast? I, I saw you one last year. It's the same thing from last year. <laughs> just, just getting it I thought, man, if I seen right, I saw your bobcat. I did the same thing. I was always on Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we should pass Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and get my okay. I, I, that, I mean, that's all right. I, I just wanted you to be aware of that. He the, wasn't on when I first looked at it when we first started, but he is now. So. Okay, this is just concerning drains. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Mike, you there? Yes, I am. It's not Kathy. Oh, Kathy Bob. <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Well, uh, let's see, I think that uh, I'll just start by giving a quick update. They're done with all of the roof installs. What they're working on right now is details on the high school. Uh, they've got all the wood blocking done. They're just working on install. They finished the install of the metal at Woodbury. So other than the canopy work, they're 100% with Woodbury and they've fallen back over to the high school to work on the details there. And uh, where this change order uh, modification request came into play was two things. Uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, when uh, Smee Busby designed the project and bid it out, we bid it as a, uh, a, a fixed contract with a contingency fund of 4%. So that contingency was for the unknowns. And so what happened in the process, we had 56,000, which was the 4%, 56,664. Well, the first contingency usage was after uh, the maintenance staff took down the chimney, there was some damage to the roof, damage to the decking, damage to the gutters at Woodland. So that was the first request to use the contingency fund. That was number one. 
then number two and number three were similar. What they found was um, there were a number of drain, in, drain bowls themselves that were leaking in the process of the project. So it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with the roof. It was the connection from the drain bowl to the drainage down below. And so uh, the contingency number two request and contingency number three, one, the number two was for the high school to put in five drain inserts that bypass that coupling ring. And so un unfortunately for the contractor, but fortunately for the high school, they installed one of the drain inserts at the wrong location. And so the school actually has six drain inserts on the high school when we've only paid for five. And then they had to do one over the office at Woodbury. So that was the th first three. And then uh, there were issues at the canopy at Woodbury. And so uh, the, the school system approved to do repairs and caulking at the, on the canopy at Woodbury. So that was the four requests for the contingency funds to be used. And so that used, um, with those four allocated, we have left in the contingency fund $33,000. So just to bring you guys up to speed on that, that's left over. We don't believe that we're gonna run into anything else on high school Woodland or Woodbury that would need to use the contingency funds. When the manufacturer of the roof system was walking the roof last month, they pointed out issues with the drain bowls uh, and the issues that he's had some concerns over. And then recently we had a leak over uh, Mr. Courtney's office. And when we investigated it, it was another drain bowl that was leaking and not the roof assembly. And so they proposed to put a new drain insert. And what we were looking at is instead of doing just one at a time at $1,650 per drain insert, what we asked the contractor to look at is if we did all of the drain inserts all at one time, what that cost would be. And so what we looked at is there's 46 remaining drains that have not been addressed at the high school. If they were to do that at 1650, that comes to 75,900. But what we did is we asked the contractor to look at the value of scale in order to do all 46 at one time instead of one at a time. And they brought that number down to 1,150. And so that number comes to 52,900. And what we were looking at is if we did that on a value of scale to do all 46 at one time, some of them may not leak in the next five years, some of them may, it's an unknown factor. And so, but if we do all 46, what that'll do is if we use the remaining $33,000 of the contingency to knock all those out, we're gonna be left with just over $19,000 to, to use as a true change order that would be over and above the original contract plus the contingency. And so I spoke with Gregor Smee of Smee Busby, I spoke with Freddie, and it, I think it's a good use of funds. That's not, those aren't my funds, they're not my dollars. That's the reason I brought it to Freddie and said, what do you think? And he wanted to bring it before the session and the, and the uh, uh, school board to say, is this a good use of funds? And do you guys wanna move forward with that or, or not? And so that sort of brings you up to the reason that that was submitted as an option for the school board to look at. So if you have any questions, feel free to fire away. Are the old drains metal? The drain bowl itself is metal, it's cast iron, and the uh, plumbing below, most of it, I've not looked inside, but most of it is cast iron. And where we're getting the problem is the, where the drain bowl meets the drainage below, there's a, um, a rubberized coupling ring that connects those two. 
and the building is what? When was the school built? What, in late 70s? 78. So, so, I mean, it's old, and that one component is getting some age. When we were designing the project, or when Smee Busby was designing the project, we were not having leaks at those locations, but it's, there have been five of them, now six of them on the high school that have developed. We've addressed six of them on the high school. There's one still remaining over Courtney's office that's been caulked temporarily. That one will need to be done as part of this project. The question is, do we do all 46 at one time and just knock it all out and get a, you know, basically we're saving $500 per drain insert to do it all at one time. We still, we still have quite a bit left over on the county allotted for it. It's coming away on the budget, so. I, I, I think it's be fun. Them farm comes. It, it, like he said, it, you don't know it. They may last five years, they may last five months. And they'll start deteriorating some more in my kitchen. Do you know, the leakage fly will cost you $1,000 to fix a leak every time damage below and all that. They're selling tiles ain't cheap, I know that. Everything else is looking good, Mike. Everything is looking really good. Unfortunately, we've had a tremendous amount of rain this summer as you guys know uh, which has put the contractor behind schedule but overall everything's looking really good and we'll be back out there Tuesday of next week for another progress meeting so I'll be able to update a little bit further on what timeline we think we're going to be able to be done oh and to give you an update um, the section on the back side of the high school that is not under this particular contract, it was under the same manufacturer that's being used on the entire high school. The manufacturer's inspectors walked that roof a couple of months ago with the contractor and they found some lap seams starting to peel. And it's not creating a leak yet, but it's a long term maintenance issue that we could see coming. And so the contractor proposed to the manufacturer and as no additional cost to the school system they're going to pay the contractor to come in and clean every lap seam on that roof and patch it back in so that roof system will last quite a bit longer than it would have otherwise so that was i was a little surprised that they actually paid to do the entire roof um, so that's that was really really good news so That'll extend them being on project, but they won't do that until they're done with everything else. Okay, thank you, Mike. Anybody got any questions for me? All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Is that it? That's it. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Doug, do you know which item you are? Okay, it's under the budget amendments, which is nine. nine. Uh, let's see which one it is. I think it's BOE. Resolution 2021-3, I think. And you, you get a 21-22? Yes, that's it. Um, I don't know <laughs> what y'all know about what all's going on with Darlene and I. And I don't want to get into a long discussion about it, but this uh, 81 Act, when it first was voted in, Diane offered me the assistant job. And before I took, said yes, or even considered it, we went to White County and saw how they did the 81 Act. And so the way they did it, 
they did all the work in the central office and just sent it up to the finance office for payment. They did all the legwork, printed everything up. They just cut the checks and sent them back. So that's what we decided we'd do. And, and Diane was working toward that. She'd advertise for employees. And then Mr. Curtis gets a call one day that says, um, you can't do that. You've got to send them. And of course the question was asked, well, if White County can do it, why can't Cannon County do it? And they said, it doesn't matter. That's White County and this is Cannon County. So you've got to send them. So we met with Diane and Mr. Curtis and we, Darlene and I said, you know, at this stage in our lives, we just like to have the same salary and benefits that we get now. We won't ask for an increase. So that was what they put in their budget. And we thought that was the way it was going. But the county's insurance is the same plans that the board offers, but the county only pays $400 per month toward an employee's insurance. And the board pays 92% of an individual employee's insurance. So with this, Darlene and I would realize a cut in pay of about uh, 21 or $200 during a year's time, making the same salary, but with the insurance, we'd be taking a cut in pay. We'd be getting that much less money. So this is what we're proposing, is the, what the increase in the amount given to the finance office would cover the difference in our insurance as if we were still working here at the board. And uh, where that money can come from, we paid local government by their requirement for a whole year of software support, even though we knew we would be not using it for the whole year. And so that was paid out of last year's money. And so we're gonna get a refund of probably double what we're needing here to, and that was more than funding. So that's what we're asking for. Um, it's just to try to keep us in the same amount of money we're getting now. And not, we're not wanting more, we're just trying to keep what we've got. And of course, this is a, a increase and a, and a line item in the budget where you take it from one category into another. So it's gonna to have to be passed for the board. The board passes it and the county commission has to pass it. And if you look at these amendments, there's two pages on each one of them. The first page is where you approve it. And the second page is the resolution that the county commission approves. So you can see the dates are different. The county commission will meet November 5th. And of course your meeting is Thursday night. So that's what we're asking for. And we would appreciate your consideration. I think the 81 Act stated all employees dealing with financial problems will go to the financial management office and all monies go with them. Mm -hmm. So, Are you anything you want to add to it now? You good? Let no, you except I think they did tell Freddie that to work it out and that we could be grandfathered in with honorary benefits and yeah. their leave. They did tell him that to work it out. To work it out and <laughs> we should be grandfathered in with honorary leave and our benefits. Any y'all got any questions for Douglas? Mm -hmm. Uh, next year there won't be the same scenario, right? There won't be a refund. Right? Next, year. next year there won't be a refund to cover no. that. So it'll be there, there'll be land there next year to be paid. Another year, we'll be another year older. You don't qualify for a different thing. I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, don't have, I don't have to tell everything I know. Yes, I'm 16 days older than you. And Darlene's not too far behind. <laughs> oh, I never said your age. That's <laughs> right. I'll say one part of it. Right, anybody any more questions for Douglas? Yeah. Ah, we're good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See y'all Thursday. Thank you.
Uh, let's see. Then we can come back and put this over. That's number C. Let's see, which item is testing? Number five? I'm probably doing this out of order. Please, man. So, it is. I have inherited a copier lease. I'm sorry, guys, I can't talk very well with a mask on. I have inherited a copier lease that expired October, I'm sorry, April 21st. I have my master copy that I, and I'm going to okay, email him. Okay, okay, I'll email him all the documents. I apologize. I did not. Let's see. Let's see. No, I don't have any of yeah. new copy. <laughs> So it expires April 21st of 2021. Um, I have got it at least serviced to where it is making um, better copies now. However, when I started looking at the cost of what this machine um, is we're incurring on a yearly basis, I was absolutely floored. So the top page I've just summarized my research for you all. Um, you're going to find three bids. One is from Canon, which has the state contract. The second is from Reach Technologies, which is who I currently have a lease with. It used to be MBM, located in Murfreesboro. The third is from Dex Energy. The state contract with Canon is by far much cheaper. So just with the summary, looking at my current copier lease, I do still have six monthly payments of 160.62 left to be paid. Um, the lease agreement will be paid in full on April 21st. Sorry, I typed it right there. Early termination fee, what, when I asked what I could pay to buy out my lease, they were going to assess an uh, early termination fee of $317.80 if I terminated prior to March 21st, which is within 30 days of when it ends. And black and white copies are currently um, 0.0121 per copy. That doesn't seem like very much, but multiply that by 10,000 or, or so copies and you end up with a pretty hefty bill. Also, color copies are over eight cents a copy, which is also astronomical. Part of this is just due to the age of the machine and technology that's outdated and by replacing it, it's going to be much cheaper. So, Canon by far has the better deal. Uh, he gave me four different quotes. I'm going to go ahead. I'm asking for you all to approve me to go with quote number 893. It is a color machine. It will print 60 pages per minute. It gives you the black and white copies per page, the color copies per page, and the fixed base monthly rate. I have estimated very high on the number of copies that my school will need at 15,000 monthly black and white copies. The reason I chose that, that was the highest one month total in the last fiscal year. That was also when we were printing paper packets. So I do not anticipate it going near the 15,000, especially with the curriculum materials that we have. Most things are provided for us. I have really weighed heavily on whether or not to even go back with a color copier. However, there are certain times that that is needed. For example, if we were having our annual harvest festival, I would want to print my programs in color. We print year-end certificates in color, kindergarten, eighth grade programs for graduation as well. I plan to have that restricted um, so that it's not being utilized um, you know, unless it's necessary. I do have a color printer in our building, but if I am correct, I believe it's over 11 years old, and it requires four timer cartridges at a cost of 300 per cartridge, so it's about $1,200 just to replace the ink in that printer. Wow. Yeah. So when I just did the price comparison, um, you know, just the additional per month, for a color copier, I'm looking at about $9 more. And so thinking about $9 over the course of a year, it's much cheaper than even contracting out to uh, Kinko's or Staples or anything for any of the things that we were to need. This is, this is the same company, Central Office Utilization. Yes. Excuse me. Central yes. Office Finance, same 
Yes. So I will go ahead. Yes, so we're almost, almost every school was on a different. We're using yes. the hospital. Well, we uh, come to with them almost five years now. Okay. So what I have calculated. I to school with Cannon until just recently, mm -hmm. anymore, because mm -hmm. I noticed everybody kept coming and coming. Everybody was using a different company. Mm -hmm. So even on a high estimate, for the machine that I'm requesting to be able to enter into a one-year lease, not a four. It is a one-year lease that is renewable at the end of that year for up to four years for the same contractual price. Um, you can see what my yearly estimate is. However, in June, it should really be um, negligible, really and truly, other than just that fixed base. Um, even adding on, what I owe um, for the remaining six months of that lease, I have estimated about a third of the cost of what it cost last year because I included that in the current copier lease summary of what was paid out um, from August 2019 to August 2020. It was over $6,300. How did your harvest festival do? Well, we haven't really had a harvest festival. We're doing some fundraisers, but we are going to have kings and queens, and it's probably going to be recorded um, and shared either via Zoom or some type of virtual DVD option. Our, and our last turn-in is next Thursday, but we are doing well so far. I mean, I'll have the funds to cover this for the year. And of course, it's a savings actually to the school. They don't they realize that that's the hardest part of the harvest festival. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't. Until we <laughs> had that meeting. Yeah. We, we paid you were here. We paid for our this coffee. Uh, this and telephones. Yes. Yeah, yeah we agreed. When we found out they had to pay for their own telephones. <laughs> Anybody have more questions for so first I have some um, surplus buses that they're currently parked at Mr. Boyd's garage and I only have this one copy of them and I'll slide to pass them around. There's about nine of them. And um, they've been at Boyd's, mm, geez, a long time, some of them. So um, buses can stay in use up to 18 years now, but some of those went out when you can only be in there for 16. So there's some older buses. They look pretty bad. But we do have some local farmers who have kind of contacted me and said they'd like to cut the uh, chassis, cut them away from the chassis and use those for wagons. So I would like to do the bid process where they like we did we did a bid close bid on those before, when they just send in and bid on them um, and just try to get rid of those. So we get them out of boys way and um, you, as you can see we've pretty much taken everything off those buses that we can use. They're just kind of how big is that one? Um that is a 21 passenger so it's out, it can't be insured. Mm -hmm. And that's really bad about the little buses because they can only go 12 years no matter what. That's um, that's buses for like Yeah, but you can't all kids in them. Yeah. Do they all run? No. no. <laughs> They're pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> so how long have they been up there without being used? Oh, well, that was been out of service for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Nine years. And they can't be, can be refurbished and got back in the service? There's nothing you can do with them except for cut them for hay wagons. And some people have actually contacted me about making um, motor homes. Of course, they can do that as well. Um, churches can buy them and make them, but these are really pretty bad shape. And Boyd's pretty much stripped them. I mean, you can see that one doesn't even have a motor. Or so. I mean, we pull all the parts okay. that we can off of them. So um, they're not in very good shape. But I'd like to just get rid of them, get them off his property. And then, like I said, there's some. Local folks who want to Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we'll do. Make some envelopes and let people just send in our things. I'll get with Mr. Curtis if y'all approve us to be able to do this. I would like to do that. 
See if that's okay with you guys. I can't imagine what you're doing well with money. <laughs> All that one? All that money. money. Yeah. 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 They're gonna have to come get them. So yeah. you aren't gonna really make them. I'm trying not to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to make them That's why they've been there so long. Okay. And we pulled all the parts off too. So. And then my second thing on here is the bus bid, and I had two bus bids come in. Um, those of you who don't know, back in October of last year, I had a bus accident. I was driving. Um, for a driver that had left us on Friday night. And on Monday morning, I came and got the bus, did my walk around, everything was great. I left. And about the sale barn up here, um, my headlights went out. And I thought it, I would have dimmed them or turned them on right because there was a car on the road. It was a really foggy morning. And I turned them on and they went out. And I thought, well, what have I done? You know, I left them in. And um, my dash lights went out. So as I was turning, they come back on, and as I was turning on Center Hill Road, they went out again. I did pull over, kind of eased off the road. I couldn't see where I was going, but I did pick off the road a little bit. And it was really, really dark, and it was really, really foggy. And I thought, somebody's going to hit me. So I got them back on, and I thought, when I get short mountain school, I'll stop. Well, they went out again, and the next time they went out, when they come on, I was at the end of Center Hill Road, and I ended up <laughs> in the ditch. And I landed on her dad's fence when I kept looking at her. And that bus totaled. That gave us $67,000 for it. It was because they totaled it because of a safety issue, not because it wasn't really worth it. Because it would have been cheaper for them to fix it. And they just said safety things happen and they didn't want to take that chance. So they totaled that bus, gave us a check for 67000 That money went into reserves when we didn't use it at the end of the year. And the county commissioner, Mr. Curtis, has talked to them, and they're going to give us $30,000 to go along with that to get us a new bus this year. Because as you've heard, that's out of my budget. Mm -hmm. So that this is something the commissioners is doing with their COVID money. They're going to give us $30,000. We did not budget for new bus. No, we did not. Last 10 years. We have to cut that out. Yeah. So, and what you guys don't know is in 2000, this this count, which was before I was doing this, um, not before I was driving, but I remember when it happened. They bought four new buses. Well, they all go off at the same time. They leave at four. So, I'm trying to stay ahead of that. So, when mm -hmm. I lose four, I'm not behind four. So, that's where I've been for many years trying to catch up to that. So we don't do that. But anyway, they're going to pay that. So we had two, we did a bus bid. We had two bids come in. One for $87,591 from Central States, which is Bluebird. And then one for um, $99,200. But that included the seat belts. But I get a seat belt bid. Every year I apply for the seat belt bid or the seat belt grant through the state. I am the only county getting that money. That's eventually going to be required, seatbelts on school buses, and I'm trying for us not to pay it. So I get it every year. So I took that out. So hers came in at $89,200, a difference of $2,409. But because we're getting it from the commissioners, I think we're going to have to go with the lower bid. I do think that the Cumberland girl is going to be here. Thursday night to try to talk to me to let me be her bus. Um, I'm a Ford girl and I'm a Bluebird girl. That's just, I like a Bluebird bus. They just drive a little better to me. But you know, it is what it is. I don't care either way. I just don't know that the commissioners will go the extra twenty four hundred. Neither one of these buses have an international motor, right? No, they do not. Okay. I do have, I did buy one three years in a row about internationals that had a max force engine that are crap. Um, we replaced one four motors and one four times at a cost of $25,000 each. The last oh time I put in 
I put yeah. in a um, hard on us. Yeah, uh, last time I put in a Cummins engine, so that won't happen in that one. One has has had to have one new engine. It was under warranty, and we're babying it. And the other one has never had an engine different from that Max Force. I know, and we're babying that baby too. We just are special with those buses. So, but those drivers are crappy. But no, it does not. They have the Cumberland. I mean the. Cummins. Cummins, and with an Allison transmission. But I, I, I'm afraid she's going to want me to make a recommendation. And I, I just think with the commissioners, we have to show them we're cutting every corner. I think you know, even though it's $2,400, mm -hmm. I don't think we can ask the commissioners to go over. That's just my thoughts. You can, she's going to give you a good spiel, though. You're partially blue and so is international, correct? It is. And I am. I mean, but I mean, some of you guys may be a shady person. I mean, I won't hold it against you. You're the one that drives them. I know. <laughs> well, I like, the internationals have a lot of room when you walk up. They're op more open. They have the front engines on the front. Um, their turn ratio is not as good as a Bluebird because those are those stunt goes. But they, a Thomas bus rattles an international to me. We had so many problems with windows dropping. Just the blue bird is the cheapest. Yes, the one yes. that you want is the cheapest. Yes. Okay. But I, even though she's going to say she can get it here faster than the blue bird people can get it here, in the long run, it's $2,400. I don't know that the commissioner. I think in good faith, we're trying to make good stuff with them. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, to get along with them. Yes. And them. So I think $2,400 is a big deal, Rodney. Mm -hmm. You want know the one that's going to last a lot, is true? Yeah. That's trouble. Yeah. Well, you know how many potholes we get? <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> it's bad. I would like to tell y'all I have a, a bus driver and assistant that have COVID that really need our prayers. My bus driver has been admitted to the hospital today. So oh. Y'all would keep praying your prayers. Is Karen Ashford. Mm -hmm. And then Donna Fan is my assistant, and she has it as well, and she has pneumonia. She does seem to be doing okay. She is doing okay. They're just doing lots of breathing treatments and stuff, but I still feel bad. I'm yeah. really sick. But please keep Karen in your prayers. She's, she is. She over here? No, she's in Smithville. Okay. Her husband, Mr. Wade, which I think he's 83. He also has. Today, I know. Right now she is at Smithville. Now I don't know if they're going to transport her. I talked to her earlier and she said they were talking about transport. Oh, sure. Do y'all have any other questions? I'll get them. Anybody have any more questions for me? No. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you, Liz. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be here for the entire show. So, uh, <laughs> so starting number seven is the uh, portable classrooms, and I'm betting that's what you're here for, right? We have one. Um, one day, about two weeks ago, um, I went like, what is that? Yes, that's a. Um, he has Stone River Recovery. They stopped by online to look at our portables, and I didn't realize like, that it was really going to happen. Mr. Mary. Yes, I mean, how, you know how you're Jerry. Jerry, Jerry. thank you. Stop by to ask to see our portables, and I was like, well, we have kids in them right now. You know, like we're still using them, all but one, and it is the one that has the mold in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to get rid of that one. Um, we do have to go through and get our stuff out. You know, probably everything's really not going to be much that we're going to need, but still, we need to clean it out. So I would love to get rid of the one that's. Moldy. The rest of them are in terrible condition, but we're still using them. We have to have because when you had mine, it was going to hurt us. I was thinking, like, oh, we're getting new ones. I don't think we have any. I don't think there's 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 any. I don't we have one that has three classrooms in it, and we use one end for a classroom, and then the other two are storage. So, of course, we need to keep it because if we 
Sales, one of them does that many go back to that school? No, okay. I didn't know, that's what I was asking. I mean, I guess you could vote to give it back to them if you wanted to, but school didn't pay for the course. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> it so, it's okay if you're coming from like town towards our school, it's the very back one, is the one I'm referring to, and it's the smallest one. Um, but it's it's a bad choice needs to go and almost all the skirting is gone from around it because every time a storm comes it just takes a little bit more of it <laughs> so it's underneath is exposed and stuff so okay anybody else have questions for Ms. Cassie? Mm -hmm. all right marcia i'm number four <laughs> <laughs> so i brought some more paper copies of the calendar if you need to look at them for i did I don't have one. Okay. So I think we talked about this the other evening, and this has gone through the committee that is made up of the um, representatives from the CCEA with the regulations or guidance through our MOU, and then once it goes through them, then I present it to the principals. The principals did tweak it a couple of things. They wanted to move the um, spring. Uh, teacher conferences to the February date that you see because our new guidelines about retention and promotion have to happen on February 1st and then parents have to be contacted within 15 days of, to notify them of our intent that we're considering um, retaining a student. So we wanted that to fall that we could have that parent teacher conference with them. And then I'm trying to think one other thing that y'all, do you remember Angela that y'all tweaked on here? I can't remember now. Um, teacher conferences and there was one other th oh I know what it was when to have the um registration for the eighth grade and the kindergarten yes. students yes. because it was like falling on a Friday or yeah, uh, on a Friday no, or but, something yeah something so we just got their input at the school level so it can be amended yes I'm surprised I haven't already had to come right. to you for this year's calendar so then, <laughs> then I went back to the every time that we tweak it out of um consideration to the CCEA and the MOU respecting that um, agreement between the board and them. Then I always send it back to them. So after the principals even put that, I sent it back to them and no one had any um, questions or concerns or didn't want to do what the principals had suggested. So you're gonna love that fall break. 18 through the two did, did I put the wrong date on there? Put three twos. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty doggone. Yeah, like okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. Yay. You know how many sets of eyes see this, and you're the first person that's told me that? <laughs> so, this is Marcia's copy. I will get you a clean copy. Thank you for noticing. 
Right, any more questions for Mark on that? Mm -hmm. Tell me again, what, what, uh, how do we determine fall break? That's actually the discretion of the committee to make a recommendation, but our school district, I guess even before I really started doing this, traditionally has done the first, you know, the third full week of October for fall break and the third full week of March for spring break. That way when people have to start telling their places of employment when they're, we, even if we don't have an approved calendar, we can say, well, I can tell you 80%, it traditionally is here. Now that doesn't mean it can't change, so. And then the other thing that we have on our calendar that can cause us a pause for concern is that we try to make it after, whether it's spring break or fall break, I can go ahead, after the 15th of the month or as close to it as we can. Our entire payroll person is one. And so if we move it forward so that by the MOU that you have with the CCEA, if payday falls within a break, so let's just say this year, had we decided to have fall break next week, the 12th through the 16th, it would have meant payroll would have had to have gone out a week early on the 9th. And that has, uh, Shannon scrambling really to get it completed by then to be able to get out by the by the ninth because what we have to do is we have to shorten the month before and then if we shorten the time sheets to come in early that means people's pay that are paid hourly their paycheck is cut shorter right before a break and then they don't have money to spend on them. So this just works. This is just a system we've fallen into that works. But you know, that doesn't mean it can't be changed. And technically the last ownership of the school calendar is with you. We can always take anything back um, to the calendar committee if you don't like something or want something tweaked. So and then the other thing is then if we have it like the first week before the 15th, once again, we have to cut getting all of our timesheets and all. So it just like I said, it, it's a burden on our financial department, if you will, to have a shame. To Shannon, to Shannon, our yeah, one person. You know, some people, I know we've gone to Florida on the fall break before, and it's a roll of the dice. Mm -hmm. Last year at this time, no, no, probably don't remember, but the temperature last year at this time was still in the upper 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was 98 here. That's yes. what I'm talking about here. Yeah, yeah. But one year we went to Dolphin Island and fall break, and it we had a tornado warning, and then the temperature dropped and it sleeted. Oh goodness! Yeah. I went on fall break. Pay when you place to go because we've had, had that happen. Dolphin Island, we've yeah. had great weather there. Yeah, that's our favorite place. I love and it. Then, I love it too. It's not yeah. fun. Then real cold. They got hit bad with the last hurricane, they right? and they had just had one before we were there. I think the most controversial thing I've seen was change the graduation date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that got pretty heated, but it, it got for me the two biggest things out of it was it got the kids graduation. They all have parties and everything instead of it being uh, Memorial Day. Yes, I agree. That was I off, think that was a great move. It got them off the road at that point in time, and it also got the diplomas and everything set and their GPAs and everything set early so they could send them to college to get it yeah. over. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what. The a they, flip side of that was is that. We, for the ever since I can remember, had graduation. And the thing that I heard was families that would say, I love it that weekend. We get a three day weekend, we're traveling, we we're able to come in and stay longer with our families to celebrate. But once again, you hear both sides. So, you know, it was putting off. Courtney came in here and got along. And I didn't realize it, though. The colleges were taking their applications and everything, and everyone from every other school system was getting in ahead of our kids. And they, you know, Classes would fill up. They didn't have a fight yep. chance, so that was, that was pretty heated <laughs> on that one. But anyway, that's the most controversial thing that I've ever seen. Um, How long's it been? Yeah. Three. Well, no, we've only done second, it. We've third only third done year? it twice. This will be the third, third. year. Okay, Austin and Ed, a senior year since. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other ones. Okay. Well, that's it. All 
Okay, so at the bottom of the first resolution, it does say at the time that the budget was passed, the state schools grant had not been awarded. That grant was $830 more than we budgeted. So um, that's why a portion of that grant needed to be extended in a different budget category than anticipated. That's an old ringer. So that tells at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Then if you go to the, uh, resol the next resolution, it was the bus that was total. That's the one that Lisa was telling you about. The risk management did pay the value. I didn't um, finish my story, but <laughs> the previous driver never told me that he hit a deer that night, the night on Friday night, and that's what caused those lights to go out. Mm. Never Is that person still one of your drivers? No, it's me. Just said I'd ask. But I think Lisa talked to you about the seatbelt restraint grant that she always mm -hmm. gets. So then having the money actually then from the um, commissioners will make up the difference and pay for the, a new bus. And then the last one was the one that Douglas did talk to you mm -hmm. about. Was their insurance. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any questions about it? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to read these four policies, Marsha? Read all of them, or just the titles? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can look over them and look in your books and stuff yeah. and see if there's anything. That's just the thing we need to review them every year, just to say that we've looked at them. If there's any changes, anything, any recommendations. Um, recommendations that you have to change anything you know, bring it up to the meeting. Have you already gone over the transportation ones, Lisa, for this month? Mm -hmm. Can you read I'll look at them. Okay. Sure. I'll be making them. Thank you. All right. I think we've done the past. Number 11. If you need to say something, Lisa, about it, just come back mm -hmm. to your number 11. We've been sitting here a while. No, 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 you're fine. Go ahead. Number 11 is uh, approve the vision, uh, approve the vision, mission, and goal statement that we covered when uh, Mr. Torres was here. Y'all had me with the way to let me lock the way the things we did. Mm -hmm. Did you get to watch that? You did get to watch I did. That. I did, and I turned my paperwork in. I did approve you, right? Yes. That's good. That's great. <laughs> That saves you a trip to Nashville. Yes. Right. Anybody got any questions about that? Very good. All right, number 12. We did that. Got pretty much. I just said, said we'd do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good. Let me make sure to put that in my calendar. So I was about to say. Yeah, when is that day? The 27th at 11 o'clock. Okay, this is one that's a little bit interesting here. It's going to require signatures to everybody. Now, this is to request to the state put this in layman's terms, that they do not cut the BEP funding because we're down 110 kids, 110 kids. And uh, several other districts have already done this. I think Mr. Curtis used an example. Yeah, I think it's That they had already done this and sent it in. I think this is an over too. Uh, that's a lot of money. What's the chances of them doing that? I have no idea. I think it's pretty great. With, With the COVID? Okay. It may be, but here's something else you got to look at. The state's lost a lot of money fighting COVID too, and they're probably going to cut into a thing they can't do. And that's about $825,000 if they cut it. Yeah. If that happens. I'm going to put my son I don't know if you're signing or not, but anyway. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Something Freddie can bring them to the commission when she's here. Okay. Yeah. 
up here where we did the under that Preston Tomlinson, it says no bus trips right there. Yeah. Is that going to include sports? No, it's just your overnight trips. That okay. And here we are, obviously from COVID. Okay. For a while, so that's what this flat was up. We used to have fun here. <laughs> I do believe the next one is a request that uh, we don't have state standardized testing with our teachers or uh, principals and teachers and members, everybody here is having a, this distance learning is a, a nightmare to say the least. And there, I don't think we ought to hold them accountable for that. I don't think you guys do either. I mean, it's no. just it's not right to hold the teacher. That's no brainer too. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Fourteen. Save some of the better stuff for last. I was say maybe we just need to finish everything else and go back to that. <laughs> well, we don't have too much. Left. I know it. <sighs> Floors open. Don't take off. I know there's going to be something dead. Nothing. What? I, it, this is discussion regard regarding distant learning, and was it discussed before that we were going to try to end it after fall break? Yep. Unless they had a medical condition. Yep. Had but it had to, we. I think we're going to have to be more specific on that because we all know anybody can go to the doctor and get a note. Well, I talked to Miss Tabitha Smith today about that, and she said if. Um, if parents come and they want that, they're not going to be, they don't want to be held liable. Right. So. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that too. They don't want to be held liable. The HIPAA law may keep us from exactly. knowing That's what, what their thought. condition is. But if they went to school before and they've had that condition, then why? Well, well I think I've talked, yeah, I've talked to a lot of parents, Mr. Curtis and I both have, about students who do virtual learning and probably across the county there are probably 10 families I wouldn't say there's any more than 10 maybe maybe 12 that have real serious situations where there was one mother who's um, on bed rest with this, uh, a high-risk pregnancy and she's just like I, I can't come get them I, I can't let that come in my home I just can't I can't do that then there's one mother that her was keeping her mother with hospice and she's like i don't need that here right now so but of, of those of all the families we have it's like probably it's but not how many are going to try to use some other excuse well i don't know I don't, yeah 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 but i mean you know what i'm saying but of the real need that i truly have so we're going to put it where they have to come in front of the board to decide or uh, be great. I, i'm I don't know how that works. I don't know. Then I, just, ever been then I will tell you then, then you're going to have that gap of time. If you say the board, let's just say, and you say whenever you give it, I'm just giving you some consideration things. So you are going to say that um, at Thursday night that everybody's going to start back after fall break right. or whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. but you're not meeting again until November and you say it has to come to the board mm -hmm. and we've got an absenteeism problem for two weeks and paperwork to be filled out and Lisa to process that and and then Bonnie's out too so we don't have her the, all the influx of what we see, school that might happen. What do we see what response we get on that and then if 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 they respond immediately next week then you can kind of let it ride and then when we meet again we can re-entertain some of those how about that you know what i'm saying because yeah, your hands are tied and you don't or meet but or then, really there's just a few weeks between fall break and i think a legitimate medical reason for the student or the parent five six it's six and a half enough weeks to, to continue it for them. Yeah. We, we really, really so, need to enforce the same rules on those kids. We don't need to lose any um, 
with 110 gone, we don't need to lose a ton of kids because we said they had to come back. True, but after talking to all the principals. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I understand. That's why I said I think there's, and I've told them, there's probably 10 in the whole The rest district. of them are just saying. And I think you have one that has one one lung, but she said her kids are oh, there all by all yeah. them. So, I mean, some of them were just scared for that time period, but. I think you're, I think you're, this is a disaster. This is just my take on it. It's a disaster for our teachers. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster for our students. Um, and I think it's going to, I think, you know, you said this about the woman who has the health issues. She sent them back. Mm -hmm. It's beginning to be a disaster for parents. Mm -hmm. They're wanting their kids to get back in. I think that, in my opinion, I think we need to say we're going back unless you have, you know, it's a documented health issue and then see what comes our way. I, I, you know, Miss Lisa's saying it's 10. I don't think we're going to have a crazy amount of people making requests. I could be totally wrong, but I think we've got to make a stand. I think we've got to make a stand for our teachers. I agree and with you. I came on this board to be an advocate for children, and this virtual stuff is not the best thing for any child, in my opinion. No. Mm -hmm. I feel like they lost a year because mm -hmm. children based on last already, grade too. Children uh, and even us, uh, when you have to go back and review for those tests, you retain a lot of that knowledge right from there. I'm sure I remember this, it's in here now, you pull it out of your grandmother, you can store it, it's there for the test. But we didn't get that last year. And now we're poor. Almost doing it again. You're going to have kids two years behind in school, and uh, that's a tragedy. Especially whenever a TCAP comes back around and they do tests, I think we're going to see a, and it's understandable, a major, major, major drop. All right, that's some good thoughts, y'all. Got a little more time to think about it. That's about two days. <laughs> <laughs> that was what, what I was kind of getting to, alluding to is maybe Freddie. If there is somebody that they that he be the stopgap until we're able to see the cases, well, he'll get a good feel about what what they're saying. Mm -hmm. I think he's pretty mm -hmm. discerning. Like I said I think there's like maybe ten. Yeah, that we, are really, we have a handful. That's no big deal. You know? I mean, you know, that are really seriously yeah. got some issues. If we had a hundred come in. That'd be different. Right, but I mean, that's manageable. Mm -hmm. How many do we have doing virtual? Not downtown. We have an eleven. I mean, I, we're I way back like down. Now. We are way down. Oh, I can get you a number by Thursday night. Like we are one one way down. Your time virtual. I would like to know how many persons. Because <laughs> I didn't, like Lisa, uh, like Alita just said, the parents are ready. They're ready to send it back. And some of them are already sending. Well, we'll have to have our like our we quarantine take them back if they yeah, want. You've got to be able to do that. Yeah. So we'll have to keep yeah. something so, going well, for our quarantine. Yeah. All lines so say you have to be there. Right. Miss Emily Hancock, she's on, but she had to send home a cold. Is Emily on there? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Emily, how many do you have? Yes, yeah, so, I'm here. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I'm in my yeah. car. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. How many virtual? Okay. So, well, actual virtual students, I have about 30, which is down from 50. I started out with 54, and we've had several come back. Once we got the word out that you're welcome to come back tomorrow, they were ready to come back. I do think I will have most of my virtuals come back if the board will just say, hey, we're stopping it and they'll come back. I will have some that will do the medical form, but I'm like Lisa, I think there's probably about 10 in my building. And so that's a whole different ball game than starting out with 50. I have had to quarantine a classroom this week and those were, it was actually a first grade classroom. So we did paper packets with them and the parents were much more excited and willing to do the paper packets than they were to do the virtual with that age group. I think you will have to keep it somewhat open for like if that happens in class. Yeah. Do I don't know who that Melissa K is. Melissa K. Yeah. 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 Okay. She's from the title teacher. Um, yeah, I think it needs to. Are there any more principals on at all? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, you have 
have anything for the safety report function. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's I'm working yeah. on the radios. I know that was one of the things she was doing with the grant. I talked to her briefly today, and that was one, one of the things she wanted me to Y'all uh, work on. Keep her there? in mind now. That's a she just they just said that that's a rough situation they're in. Right What's now. happening? It's Bonnie. Nice. Oh, yeah. How's Mr. Bush doing? He's doing really, really well. He got to come home with us at last night, right? Well, so, he's great. doing well. Yeah. Matter of fact, Jennifer said he's best. Don't tell people I've got a heart attack. I'm not that sick. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> He's a spunky guy. Mm-hmm. All right, Marsha. Yes. Any comments? <laughs> do I have 30 minutes? No, you no, do not. 45? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no comment. No. No. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys have got quite a bit to think about here. I don't think there's anything really, really major, major. I think some drains at the high school need to consider really well. I think the uh, the bus. Uh, I truly believe we need to put a stipulation on that buying that bus if the county is not part of their COVID money push. Then okay, if they do not, something comes up on that. We did not budget for a bus, uh, so we're gonna have to find a place to move about sixty thousand anyway. Well, no, I thought sixty. You do, you do from the insurance money. Sorry, and there be uh, how much do they offer to give? 30. Well, they're giving me enough to cover it. Well, that's something to consider. Um, that was a request. <laughs> you said those four. When did you say when they when they're gonna go offline? About 2023. Just coming. So Douglas's request is just this year, right? It's gonna have to come something every year, I guess. Yeah, that's the way I read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we can, if we decide to do that, it'll be for this year. Or if you pass it this time. But that's because we have the extra money because. That's, that's true. The rest of it a little bit harder. But yeah. what I was alluding to is Douglas is going to pass an age where he's only going to need supplement insurance. It's not going to cost as much. Oh, Darlene. Okay. Darlene, she's got a couple more years after that. But when they retire and somebody else is rehired for those positions, we still got to do this? No. No, they'll be county employees, no. right? Yeah. We're just grandfathering those two. That's their salaries yeah. also? That we're paying for them? No, they're taking a hundred and we're paying a hundred and four thousand a year for them. That goes perpetual. I asked that question before, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll come out every no year. No matter who's sitting in that position. That's correct. Yes. Okay. That is correct. Yeah, that's terrible. I hate to say that. But. It is terrible. I and mean, well, I don't understand why well, why can't Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know either, but it would have been a lot more than that if we mm-hmm. uh, Freddie came up with a table and chart on what uh I don't think he hired anybody back yet to fill this position no. because Doug was basically was the board secretary and he's still doing that quite a bit. I mean he's yeah. still mm-hmm. doing all this and traces uh, don't get moved over to that eventually. Uh, he Every time I had a question, Freddie and Marsha wasn't a pillow, I'd come in. I, I talked to Douglas, and he he's, was pretty much Freddie's secretary on top of the financial part. So uh, we did a table on that and kind of split it up on the jobs, how much they did outside of just financial stuff, and then we came up with that, that amount of money, and the commission agreed to it. So. I think it's been here, what, 2009, I think, is when he was hired, so he knows the history of the budgets and what we've been through, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all keep Miss Patterson uh, in your mind what they're going through right now. It's, it's a rough, rough, rough situation I feel for them. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. That's I, will, I will back up. I won't I'll, make any comments, only that Mr. Curtis and I talked about this. We do a district leadership calendar, and that's sort of a a more detailed list of you know day-to-day activities at the month and that mm-hmm. the principals get that each month and we share that with them and um, I think Mr. Curtis and I talked about him going ahead and just sharing the whole Google uh, share drive of all the district uh, leadership meetings that way you'll sort of know some of the things that we talk about at the principals meetings and uh, 
what sort of comes up. And we put documents in there too. So if I talk about Title IX, that document, if Bonnie talks about something, that document goes in there too. So sometimes it rises up to your level. Probably nothing you'd ever really need to know, but you just might be interested in what sort of kind of things happen at our district leadership. We spoke, we spoke about this uh, the Tuesday night that I was here. Um, it would be really nice. I know that y'all did it one time. All the uh, abbreviations that we use. Oh yes, you did ask about that. If we I'll could, write myself if up. we could get that <laughs> so that we would know, because it. I mean, I've been here a while now, which I'm rattle off some of them, and I'm, I'm, I don't have a clue what we're talking about. And then when you have to stop the meeting to ask what we're talking about, it's kind of embarrassing. But if, if you had that, no, there's there's a, I have one at work with for the military when I'm trying to explain it. Yeah, there might very well be a hundred. Okay. There's a lot. I ran into that when I got on. I did those podcasts, the lunch and podcasts, and it was just coming across. I didn't have a clue what any of that stuff. Was. I, I had it right mentioned to guys that like I don't know anything. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I'm wasting my time trying to say what I even want to say. Yeah, so we just have to be careful about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we do. I know Derek's not here, but one last thing that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. I talked to a few friends. I can talk to them. I can talk to this lady right here. But the ones I did talk to, they are more comfortable or felt like we would serve ourselves better if we went to their schools with our presentations. And what about our presentations? Are we going to do our presentations or we're we going to put something together? Well, are we going to come together and talk about it sometime? I time? absolutely think that we need to. I think we prepare it to the community. Uh, I think a lot of them are misinformed on a lot of items that are going on in the situations that we're in. I was waiting on the financial management office to come up with some solid numbers and uh, I wanted to do this before I started harvest. I don't have a lot of time. And uh, yeah. I will You've done try, a lot I will try so. to make as much of it as possible, but uh, something's got to be done. We've got to bring uh, the actual numbers to people. We've got to bring the actual situations. I don't. I don't think people realize how they. You know, the school systems are buying their own copiers. They're buying their own. They're not leasing their own. No, copies. they don't. Because I, I mean, we didn't know. Uh, it's not. And, and like I said before, I'm, I, it's an open book. If any of y'all have any questions, you can talk to Douglas, you can talk to Marsha, you can talk to Mr. Curtis. I can't find a waste of money, except for the fact that we're running second buildings. I was on social media today, which I try not to get on that stuff very often. I think I'm going to count some on accounts, totally. <laughs> well, I was I'm just reading. I don't sure. comment. I was just reading. Right. And Corey Davenport did a really good job explaining the budget and said he has sat down and went through everything. And he said the same thing you did. He can't see where anything's wasted. We just don't have the money to keep running seven buildings. And when well, people were, they were on the wheel tax sticker, these people yeah. were. I, I mean, I'm like, so no one else against else it, everybody is because they don't know where our money's going. That's the thing is they say they don't have any idea where it's going. I think there could be a chance for the sales tax, but we really need to push that too. And we're somewhat the, the, the estimation on the wheel tax is about $20,000. Yeah, it's minimum. It's, 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 it's not, I mean, it's you can't hire one teacher. I wouldn't even care if they didn't put that on there. No. This is the one that's more important. Um, the I community think, needs us to, to see as people realize that uh, the likelihood of two schools shutting down uh, is highly, 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 highly possible. Uh, that was one don't. tonight. May as well say that was a school tonight. That is. That's exactly it. It is. That's a school. 800. 800. 800. 800. 800. You made that point the other night. Right? Right? So, on top yes, of all of yeah. There's, there's, budget. Budget. We're already, yeah. there's a lot of scenarios that people are not realizing you're going to have to rezone and you're going to have to close a couple buildings down and you're going to have to take these extra kids and put them in buildings that are already there. They're already full. You've got buildings that They're are not that were built in 1956. They're full of asbestos. They are. They're full of mold where they've been leaking and everything else. Well, the infrastructure in Cannon County is, is, is that it's crumbling. And uh, this is a chance to help fix it. And, if they don't want to fix it, then 
the consequences are going to be worse than the. So when we, I don't, I don't know what I'm allowed to talk about and what I'm not. So I'm just going to ask. Think you you just can talk about it here. If we close, <laughs> you're sitting here. I'll say if we close Woodland, what happens to that building? We don't know yet. We don't know who's deeded it. You have to. If it's deeded to us, it's our money. I think it's the, the reason I'm asking is I had a phone call, of course, about Auburn Town, saying that someone said that the land belonged to some family. They donated it for Auburn Town to be built on. And if Auburn Town ever gets sold or closed, it goes back to that family. I think that's I don't know. I don't know. I was just curious. I, I didn't know what I was going to say. That Woodland was on was a family. Didn't clear something about that too. Uh, wasn't there uh, a lot of it around back was given or sold to by uh, uh, I forgot. I don't think it's in there about going back to the family. But yeah, once you build a building on a piece of property, that kind of yes. starts a whole new ball game. That's right. Yes. You can donate land to somebody, but. <laughs> If they build a building on it, you pretty much lost your rights right there. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Can you fix it up? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Freddie, to answer your question, Freddie's looking to see if those deeds are actually in the school board's name and not the county. And technically, they're going to legally we have to scope it out, but technically they could be sold, not reverted back to the county, sold by us and we would reap the money. If not, the county gets it and they have to do whatever they do. They'll get in there. So it depends on how it's deeded. I mean, I think you've done that. And we know somebody. what happened at the old, the old school, the old, where the gym is. And it is that being used school. for anything? No. It but they put a new floor and a new roof on it. That well, insurance. that was insurance. Years and years yeah, These bathrooms, these new bleachers. But insurance. That's for Being cool. Being cool. Being cool. I would have been a great place to play all the gym, all the grammar school games. Mm -hmm. But. Nobody wants Barbara told me out, right, she doesn't want to fix it. Well, I don't think she could afford it. She could. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that disparity, but she just didn't have any money. But does that building belong to the county? No. no it belongs to you. Okay. And we, I, we, we had people approach the board that wanted to purchase it. Mm -hmm. Can we not sell it? You can declare it surplus. Okay. Like I'm doing those us. And then have a literally have an auction or you can declare it surplus to get it back to the county and let them why would we do that though it's it's a way to get rid of it well i know but if we get back to them then they get the money well wait i think part of the deed covers any kind of gas but you have i mm -hmm. think part of the deed gets the uh, has the playground yes the and school. the in the senior citizens. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess. And then, you know, what, what could be built there is, you know, right there next to your school and the senior citizens building. And I tried to see, I laid it out. I tried to see how much acreage there was from the senior citizens on the L shape going down that, that to mm -hmm. right side. I don't think we can get a grammar school there myself. It'll be a funny looking Shame. contraption. <laughs> and it's just barely the same amount of money that would be a grammar set. Barely. So I don't see it feels whatever was put in the school there. What about in that lot beside it? That belongs to the Hoovers. That's even less land. If you had it together, though, you have it together, it'd be kind of a I don't know how you lay it out. It'd be an architectural. Does the county, why do you know, say on the, that, well, truck drivers used to use it as that parking area across that is from. Ours. That's the school system. Okay. Across the road from Woodbury Grammar School. But it's school. just a piece of it. Yeah, it's just well, a piece. I was just thinking of extended parking there, but then you can't do any kind of building on the old parking where Emily's at because I think that's where those wells are at, but the geo system. Yes, I do. Yeah. I looked, I looked at on fairgrounds. Now that's feasible. There's but enough land there. What about the land where the old river girl was that's up above the school? What's that? It's just there. Yeah. That's what he's it's talking about. Not enough there, really. No, no, no. It's, to do anything with. Yeah, it's just barely six acres. You, you would think it was more, but it's not. And to get the architect in here to look at it, 
and just see what they yeah. could do. And then a community member gave another nice. novel idea. Our high school was built to contain over 750. At one time, we had 170 students, and that's 100. 750 students. We're down to 570. Absolutely. Now, so you know, if we remodeled our schools and needed a temporary till we got these places, you know, eighth grade, we could, should we have room to put that there to make mm -hmm. an eighth grade wing, exactly. Which wouldn't be a bad idea. I don't think of that way. We, they would rotate classrooms and have access. I think one of your new mission statements was something about CTE, so you could include them yeah. in our existing CTE we programs and. Uh, I think I already thought of that. And then you're only talking about moving pre-K seven to the other building. So. Oh. Meaning, that's a good idea. Listen, listen. I think we just need more. We need more think partners. I think what the larger awesome. schools need to think about, though. I know this, the smaller schools are all upset and worried, but I think the larger schools need to be really concerned mm -hmm. about what's going to happen too, because they're going to receive these kids from these smaller schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're realizing that, and it's it's, it's going to get crowded. And, and their aging buildings, uh, the septic systems are not great. Uh, the facilities are not great, especially in the older parts. Uh, it's going to be taxing. That's another reason we're trying to stay in town. Building? Because of the sewer. No, that's what at that time. Like yeah, building a transition. Right. I think people might buy into a the transition plan in place. Right. So if you were just sort of moving them, and that was just your two or three year plan, mm -hmm. and then you had a building plan coming up to say this is next, I just think you need a, what's your plan? And I know the, I know the uh, architect that you use, I know he's, you know, can help with that planning process. I've done that myself as the superintendent of schools. So, no, I think the same thing. You know, we can sit here and talk about this. This is not something that we want to do because I think everybody here would love to see if, if we were money was falling from the sky. I think everybody would love to keep their small community schools open and everything. And, I, and I've said it before. I know where people are coming from because if something bad were to happen to all the schools, I, I I went to school at Eastside. It's right next to my, I mean, it, it's right there. I want it to be the last. I understand. I truly do. I understand. I understand exactly where they're coming from, but we're doing something uh, out of a necessity financially. And I, I, I've been screaming at the top of my lungs. I mean, Marsha had this conversation earlier today. Our test scores are not good. Guys, we've been one for at least 12 years. At the district level and the high school level, but our elementary school, not so much. But we're doing something where you can't make a zero. One's as low well, as that's zero. right. Uh, and we're just, we're not doing something right. We're, we're doing a huge disservice to our kids. Uh, I, people just need to wake up and start looking at it. Uh, they are not prepared for college. Nope. I know nope. two boys drop out of college. I have um, one. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, not, they're not ready for it. And, and yes, it's true. If you're really dedicated and you'll work hard enough, you can pull it out. But you ought to go to college being prepared. Well, Evan has been on the phone with the show every night this week. And our CTE program is, it, it, for what the money that we have, it, it's decent. I think about the only real thing that we're offering is nursing, and kids can receive a certificate right out of school. But we're not offering that now. We don't have a teacher. We're, we're not. We can't pay for it. But you, you, can, you can have a, a CTE uh, certificate in welding or HVAC or anything and easily make 50000 a year mm -hmm. right out of the high school. Bring us get what we're off our CTE off. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've got a booster. And we're, already, and we're over what the BEP offer that. Yeah, we're over what the BEP calls I mean, Ben put a chart up there showing salaries and the job availability it was staggering. I mean, it was, oh, it's uh, you, you can make if you're if you're ready when you got out of high school, you can start out pretty good living and work your way up. But we, we can't provide that. We we can't even attempt to provide. No, that. unless we keep the same scenario we've been running for All forever. Things. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, I love Nathan's letter. Y'all letter. Y'all need to read it in the paper. 
We can't, and this is we a little. Wish us the best, and sure it's really going to be really great down the road. This is a little different, but we can't even get kids from our high school to join the military. If we had ROTC at our high school, it would get them ready and let them know what the military has to offer. Right. You got one right now. Once you go, she scared to death. You right. know, when you come to town and you're standing out there and you've got parents at every red light trying to collect money and stuff just, just to send their kids on bus trips, to send their kids on these trips, to pay for uniforms, to pay for cleats, to pay for, you know. Yeah. That, wow. I don't know of another system that has to do all that. I know they fundraise, and I know that, you know, a lot of us do not fundraise like this. Not like they do. They do not fundraise. They don't like have to do because they're using the BEP to pull it back. And we are not. It's it's simply that quote. Like I said, Mr. Torres was here when we explained the situation to him. He just sat down. You have one high school and six grammar schools. It was on Bible, and he's second in command of PSBA. Yep. He's, he just he, there's only one no other system in the whole state that I know of that's doing that, and that's Grundy County right now. Everyone else has adopted and moved on and and bettered themselves, and when you hit a financial crisis like we're in right now, it's, it's not that big a deal. The BDP will fund your system yep. instead of the taxpayers of County County funding your system. Because remember, they're the elderly. <laughs> but we're not. Yeah. We're a retirement community. Somehow we've got to communicate and find out how we're going to, I mean, we've got more schools in weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we did it once before when we presented the middle school. Um, I was on that committee. Marshall was on that committee. How long ago was that? I've got all the notes still from Man, that. That's been um, a while. It's been a while. What, nine years. Nine years. We were. Maybe we had moved here, but we were very new to the community. Um, when we got to the little schools, um, I know Auburn after I got my degree at Auburn, school. I was terrified I wasn't gonna make it back to my car because they were. <laughs> oh, they uh, had signs. Uh, up. Oh, they I just told Jamie about some phone calls, calls they got. Mm -hmm. They were very upset and angry. Of course, we were on the floor and they were above us, and it was just like, oh my god. I mean, and we were just, it was just a form just to answer questions. So I would say be prepared for that. But we did several a week, didn't we, Marsha? We did one too. I think I do remember that when the no middle school signs. Yeah. Yes. I think there's actually still one over there. Is. Down. There is one. It got rough. Our mountain wasn't great either. I'll just tell you. We still have to communicate to find what they are doing. And we have to communicate with the community. I think that's the issue they have is. Oh, they came. I'm sure. That is what I have heard from parents and teachers and just other and people that aren't even parents or have a dog in the fight as far as having kids is they want to hear the truth and 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 a united front about why we have to do this. And they're looking. But none of them could have meetings either. Well, but we're not having them. Right. I think we've got to have them. And I think that we have to be, we have to be united. We have to be united. I'm not talking about just the ones around this table. I think that the people here that work at the Board of Education, the principals, the teachers, we have to come united. And I, guys, I know we're gonna, I have scary, scary things said, but I think we've got to stay calm and mm -hmm. there's got to be some of us that, that stand up and say, no, this is going to be a, a calm conversation because we all are part of this. We're all part of the whole community. The yes. Not just that we're getting rid of your whole school, but the good things that we're going to come to do working with some positives to the high school and what he could present, what he could use. Uh, I don't know how far he's got on it, uh, but um, the thing of it is, a lot of people in County County have a lot of good ideas, and a lot of people in County County are truly dedicated to their kids. The only problem I have with them is I can't fund any of it. Mm -hmm. I would love to sit down at a table just like this once a month and have a discussion about how to better educate or what can we do for our kids. How can we get them that fifty thousand dollar a year job? How can we? You know, yeah. get them that CTE certificate. How can we better our English wing? How can we better our mathematics wing? How can we help the sports program <coughs> succeed? I can't do any of that. We sit down and have conversations about how we keep seven buildings open. Well, the answer, but the answer to that, how do we provide these things, is it's going to be some changes that some of us don't really like to begin with. 
And it is not happening. Seven, seven, seven buildings. Seven buildings. Mm -hmm. It's letting our kids become united instead of being all these different things. We're can and can we? Yeah. You, you know, you see those, but you know, we've talked about the issue when they get to the high school, they're still different little communities. Maybe that's why they would have more pride in their school. Exactly. When we talk about that engaged in excellence every way and every day, that's where it starts with. It's every just, way. I was sitting right here and you were sitting right there and you asked me for some of us that's selfish not to provide for them. And we are. We haven't realized yeah. what we're doing to our kids. Yeah. It's not necessarily I'm selfish because I just want my school. They think that that particular school is better for their kids. Right. And it's not. Because it's not. we're not being able to provide what the kid needs to fully succeed in life. We're, we're not getting close. Right. But I've known that for about three years. <laughs> and I, uh, first year I didn't have a I kept thinking, well, I can come in here. I can fix this. I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. I can't. The way we're currently structured, there's hands are tied. The norm that we have right now is as good as it's going to get if we stay the way we are. I used to fuss at Marsha. I still fuss at Marsha. Oh, I, I fuss her. back. She does. <laughs> I can't hold her to the fire all the time and expect her to get seven people to do the exact yeah. same thing. I, I just can't. They're not going to. If she drove to every school every day to make sure everything was being done the way it should, she wouldn't get all seven schools covered in one day. Couldn't do it. You spend all year doing it. She wouldn't get anything else done. She can't have a day at one school today doing K through five classrooms. I'll do it. Good one on. All day. Thursday. <laughs> 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 and he's on Friday. Grammar school sitting here yep. with your K through however you want to do K through five. You've got all your grammar school kids in one place. You've got everyone doing the same curriculum. You've got everyone for the same discipline. You've got everything the same. Pick them up and put them in the middle school. You do everybody the same. And then you go to high school. And if you have out of those three schools, if you have a Failing school system, you have one person you got to go to. That's just like Jason knows with basketball. Well, with basketball, well, like he just said. Yes, right. He wanted the middle school basketball to be doing what the high school is doing, so he doesn't have to reteach it. And they already know. It's the same concept. Yes. We talked about this years ago when Jackson was in little football. And they started talking about the success in Trousdale County in football. And why is that? Same thing. It's the same thing. They teach the same place. At the at the, all the different well, levels, the high school you have to. School. It's the same thing. Yep. Go to MTSU. Go to go to Motlo and 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 look them dead in the eye and go, "What do you need from my kids?" And he should be or she should be able to give them exactly what they need. And then he goes to that middle school principal. They've got to be doing this in college. I need them to be able to do this in high school. Absolutely. And right then and there, you've got yep. two people in communication. And then that middle school principal should go to that grammar school principal and say, guys, they've got to be able to do this all day long, every day. And what we're doing right now, I mean, I, I like every single principal I have, but every principal has a different way of doing things. And they do. They're different people. And seven of them, it, it's hard to get everybody in line. And it's not just the principal. It's the community. It's everything. It's, 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 it's a lot of stuff. But we're too big, we're too spread out, and it's too expensive to do what we're doing. DeKalb County has more industry, and I'm not making just a comparison with DeKalb County, but it's every county way. They have more industry, they have more people, and they have a huge, huge tax base. Tax base. They have five schools. And we're half the size, half the tax revenue, if that. Um, and, we've got, <laughs> and we've got seven. Guys, you just can't, you can't do it and do it right. That's just, that's just the way it is. You just can't do it. I'd like to. We figure out a way to get generate money and just fall out of the sky. We we probably help us so, some. Even if we had the money to do it, we're still not doing our kids justice by keeping them. Yeah. If we had the money to do it, we're not doing right by our kids. We're satisfying. We basically whatever wasting money for we be doing. 
I won't. Yeah. You're right. I had not talked to Neil, but I sat down there on the couch and I, I penciled and I figured and I did and I, I, I brainstormed and I did everything and I carried it for a while. But if, if you guys, you guys can carry it for a while. Oh, we looked at that budget that they gave us. Mm. I don't know what Neil, I don't know exactly what he's come up with. I don't know if it will exactly work, but I think it will. I think it will. It's $35 a year more than what we're currently paying per vehicle to fix the infrastructure in Canada County. I if, think it'll go a long, long way. If it passes. Well, it, it, I don't think it will. We've got less than a month to be communicating this. Yeah, like exactly. Early voting starts right now. I'm trying to say. <laughs> when is early voting start? Early voting the 14th. The 14th, next Thursday. We say we vote on that day. Right? Be the, people will be lined up to vote that day. So. And if you don't get it's it's not voting, I think a lot of people are still thinking that they're voting on, gee, do I want to centralize and am I voting to close my school by voting yes for this? And they, they've got to realize that most likely a couple of them won't close anyway. We just keep doing what we're doing. And you can have something good out here for your kids to go to if you do that. If not, you're going to close some buildings and then 56, 62, and 3. You're going to take them out of those buildings and you're still, you're still putting them in old buildings. That are covered up in asbestos and mold and everything else. You know, I hear about the jail and stuff a lot. I don't think anybody even talks about our kids. Every time we do a repair at school, you have to call specialists in so that they, and it costs no telling what. I forget what the last one was at Westside did. We had to dig up a pipe that stopped up on floors asbestos. They got to cut all that out, move it all out, put it all out, and do something with it and clean it all up. and. You put your kids right back in there. There you go. All right, you might anything else. <laughs> Jennifer, you're a soldier. Do your so strategy. <laughs> we don't vote on things, we just tell them what's gonna happen. Yeah, but your your funding is voted on. It is, but they, get, they give us the money and then we decide how to spend it. We don't have to, it doesn't have to be voted on how we spend it once it's given to us. Well, Lisa, so that's different. You're pretty articulate. I asked you that before. You brought us up something good for the paper. Over here, over there, Friday. 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 I think. In order to make it by the sort of Monday paper. Away, I can know so Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe I believe like Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I can't remember. Freddie can help you with that. Yeah. He's always fussed at not getting it out. They don't get it. They get kind of grumpy with you. Yeah. You don't get it down. So. I'll have to pay for it. Are you ready to end the meeting? Yes. I'm okay. Ready. Brian's over there. I may have to ask you, I may have to ask you questions because I might be articulate. You can but you're a better Bye. Good night. So if I ask, I may need.